Hello, this is R.J. Deacon reading the Supreme Court of the United States opinion syllabus in Garland versus Die, certiorari to the United States Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit. Argued February 23rd, 2021. Decided June 1st, 2021. If you'd like to support the podcast, please stay tuned to the end of the podcast. If you have any interest in agricultural or shale law, look up the uh, agricultural or shale law podcast from Penn State. Um, argued February 23rd, 2021. Decided June 1st, 2021. In each of these cases, a foreign national appeared before an immigration judge, IJ, and requested that he not be returned to his country of origin. For Cesar Alcarez Enriquez, the IJ first had to determine whether Mr. Alcarez Enriquez had committed a disqualifying particularly serious crime based on his prior California conviction for inflicting corporal injury on a spouse or cohabitant. See 8 U.S.C. section 1231 B3 cap BII. The IJ considered both the probation report issued at the time of the conviction, which detailed a serious domestic violence incident, and Mr. Mr. Alcaraz Enrique's own testimony at the removal proceeding, which included an admission that he hit his girlfriend, but allegedly did so in defense of his daughter. Relying in part on the version of events in the probation report, the IJ held Mr. Alcaraz Enriquez ineligible for relief. On appeal, the Board of Immigration Appeals, BIA, affirmed. In Ming Dai's case, he testified that he and his family had suffered past persecution by Chinese officials and expected future persecution upon return but Mr. Dai initially failed to disclose that his wife and daughter had both returned voluntarily to China since accompanying him to the United States. When confronted, Mr. Dai told the real story of why he remained in the United States. The IJ found that Mr. Dai's testimony undermined his claims and denied relief. On appeal, the BIA affirmed. Mr. Alcaraz Enriquez and Mr. Dai each sought judicial review. And in each case, the Ninth Circuit noted that neither the IJ nor the BIA made explicit adverse credibility determination, made an explicit adverse credibility determination, under the Immigration Nationality Act, uh, that's Section 1158B1 cap BIII and 1231B3 cap C and 1229AC4 cap C, Applying its own judge-made rule that a reviewing court must treat the non-citizen's testimony as credible and true, absent an explicit adverse credibility determination, the Ninth Circuit granted relief. The Supreme Court held, a decision is vacated and remanded, and Justice Gorsuch delivered the opinion. The Ninth Circuit's deemed true or credible rule cannot be reconciled with the INA's terms. The Ninth Circuit's rule has no proper place in a reviewing court's analysis. The INA provides that a reviewing court must accept administrative findings as conclusive unless any reasonable adjudicator would be compelled to conclude to the contrary. That's um, Section 1252B4 Cap B. And reviewing a reviewing court is generally not free to impose additional judge-made procedural requirements on agencies. That's... um. Vermont Yankee Nuclear Power Corporation versus Natural Resources Defense Council. Judicial proceedings in cases like these do not constitute appeals in which the rebuttable presumption of credibility on appeal applies absent an explicit credibility determination. Sections 1158B1 cap BIII and 1231B3 cap C and 1229AC4 cap C. Here, there is only one appeal from the IJ to the BIA. See Section 1158D5III through IV. Um, Subsequent judicial review takes place not by appeal, but by means of a petition for review, which the INA describes as as the sole and exclusive means for judicial review of an order of removal. Section 1252A5. A presumption of credibility may arise in some appeals before the BIA, 
but no such presumption applies in antecedent proceedings before an IJ or in subsequent collateral review before a federal court. This makes sense because reviewing courts do not make credibility determinations, but instead ask only whether any reasonable adjudicator could have found as the agency did. The Ninth Circuit's rule gets the standard backwards by giving conclusive weight to any testimony that cuts against the agency's findings. Mr. Alcarez Enriquez and Mr. Dye offer an alternative theory for affirming the Ninth Circuit. Because, they say, they were entitled to a presumption of credibility in their BIA appeals, they are entitled to relief in court because no reasonable adjudicator obliged to presume their credibility could have found against them. Even assuming that there was no explicit adverse credibility determination here, the Ninth Circuit's reasoning is flawed for at least two reasons. The presumption of credibility on appeal under the INA is rebuttable, and the INA contains no parallel requirement of explicitness when it comes to rebutting the presumption on appeal. Reviewing courts, bound by traditional administrative law principles, must uphold even a decision of less than ideal clarity if the agency's path may reasonably be discerned. That's Bowman Transportation versus Arkansas's best freight system. In neither case did the Ninth Circuit consider the possibility that the BIA implicitly found the presumption of credibility rebutted. The BIA expressly adopted the IJ's decision in Mr. Alcarez Enriquez's case, which in turn noted that Mr. Alcarez Enriquez's story changed from the time of the probation report to the time of the hearing, a factor the statute specifically identifies as relevant to credibility. Um, see sections 1158b1 cap b i i i and 1231b3 cap c, 1229a c 4 cap c. And in Mr. Dye's case, the BIA also adopted the IJ's decision, which discussed specific problems with Mr. Dye's demeanor, candor, and internal inconsistency, an analysis that certainly goes to the presumption of credibility, even if the agency didn't use particular words. In each case, the Ninth Circuit should consider whether the BIA in fact found the presumption of credibility overcome. If so, it seems unlikely that the conclusion in either case is one no reasonable adjudicator could have reached. The presumption of credibility applies with respect to credibility, but the INA expressly requires the non-citizen to satisfy the trier of fact on credibility persuasiveness, and the burden of proof. That's sections 1158b1 cap bii, uh, 1231b3 cap c, 1229a, a, 4 cap b. Even if the BIA treats non-citizens' testimony as credible, the agency need not find such evidence persuasive or sufficient to meet the burden of proof. Here, the Ninth Circuit erred by treating credibility as dispositive of both persuasiveness and legal sufficiency. The decision below is vacated and remanded. Justice Gorsuch delivered the opinion for a unanimous court. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to support the podcast, see the uh, PayPal link in the show notes, find me on Patreon, or contact me at rhodesscholar80 at gmail.com. That's R-O-A-D-S and the number eight zero.